wind up picking up this new battery at Walmart and we're gonna go and install this in the vehicle. Welcome back to Drift Virals. Today we're going to change the battery in the vehicle and uh, I went and got this at Walmart as uh, you may know. This is a Everstart Max H7 800 crank, cold crank amps and a thousand cranking amps at 32 degrees. So those are pretty much at cold start and the H7 means that it's the size of the battery and these are the power starts of the battery. So um, it has a three year warranty and again, you can see the cold crank start is 800. And we're gonna install this bad boy today. Um, before I start, to give you guys a brief, brief background of um, why I'm changing the battery, is that prior I had received a low battery voltage light about uh, two years ago. And um, what I did was, which could probably help some of you guys, is I use a battery um, charger which I use a uh, Nico Genius G500, which worked great. To be honest with you, um, this kept the battery going for another two years, if not three, I believe. And uh, I would just set it on there for about a month and then from there, take it off, continue to drive and everything was good. But last weekend, I was, I drove somewhere, which is about 30 minutes from the house um, went to the boardwalk on the beach and just to take a walk around and I come back to the car and the car all the lights came on but the car wouldn't start so it took uh, a few cranks for the car to start and I that's when I knew it's like you know what I can't just continue to recharge the battery anymore um, even though I've been I let it sit there on the charger every time I park it in the garage for like months at a time and now I think the battery is just completely gone so that's really the main reason why I am changing the battery. But I would have to say that this product works great. It started dead batteries from other people's cars and also it charges it. This here has many other functions. Um, it's for all types of batteries, 12 volts, um, six volt, uh, lithium, it also helps to repair the battery if there's some kind of damage, but a lot of these new batteries really don't need to be repaired on maintenance. So this mostly, you're just gonna be using mostly the 12 volt battery. Small is anything that's considered like uh, H6 and under, and this would, you would normally be use this. You just click the mode and then the lights will come on and let you know, and this is the battery charge. 20% charge, 50, 75, or 200. If you get this warning light here, that means the battery is no good. I never got this warning light, but I think I was pretty close to it because when it came time to charge up, it would take a very long time to charge. So it's definitely time to charge to change the battery than to continue to just charge it. Over time, you lose charge. Okay, now we're going to prep this battery to be placed in. So we move the cap. Expose the prongs I should say okay so now you're going to take you're going to take this little plug here you're gonna put this in take it out break it off best you can okay this one's a little tough usually they're easy to come off maybe because you're using two hands not one <laughs> Okay, got it. Now, since this is the positive, this is the negative, with BMW, you're going to plug in the top. No, 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 sorry. You're gonna plug in the negative side over here. Okay, plugs all the way in, we're good. And now we just take the battery, we're gonna put it in facing this way. The positive, which is the red, the negative over here, which is going to be the black. 
All right, first and foremost, you're gonna open your trunk. After you open your trunk, place a rag or something where it covers the where the latch would go in to lock the, the trunk. Keep it covered so that if the, let's say, wind comes or something happens where the trunk closes, that way you're not, you know, you don't lock yourself out because once you take the battery out, there's no power getting to the trunk for you to be able to open it again unless you have pull down rear seats. And hopefully those are not locked. I believe these, you have to remove the brackets first. I believe these are tens. Uh, let me go get those. All right, I went and got me some lighting. Okay, so now the next thing is we're going to take off the negative and then the positive. You're gonna take this little tab out, push this in, and the tab moves over. And these are a 10. Take off this negative, it's a 10. And this is a 10, and I will do that off camera. Now after you loosen up the battery uh, nuts, the positive and negative, now over here, if I get you some light, there is a clip right behind there. This one right here, you gotta push it in, or I believe push it out, and then to lift both sides. Let me see if I can do this one hand. See, you can't lift it out, so I believe it's, you have to push it. It's not loose yet. And I think this one side is done. No, it's not. And now the other side. Okay, we have to do this off cam. All right. So what I did was I took off the uh, adjuster, or I should say the adapter, from flathead. Like it goes from flathead to star. And I use the hole from here to place in to this clip here and pull out. And did the same thing on the other side. It was much easier to pull out. I'm sure you could do it with the flathead too, but I think because of this, because of this chunk here, it wasn't able to do it. Now the next thing you need to do, if you need to do this, not everyone does this. I've done this before. Um, to get more room, you could take out this plug here and this plug here make sure the blue goes back in the blue and the black goes into the first slot do not put in the second slot i'm not sure what will happen but make sure it goes back in the first slot all right i will do that off camera also maybe i could do it on camera now i'm gonna have to do it off camera now if you could see all the way down there there is a nut which is right here you need to undo that in order to remove the guide and you can see there's another hole here this hole is when you have a h8 or a bigger battery you can move it back to the side but this car only needs is an h7 um, just to let some of you know I had to use an extender in order to get past the battery and into where the slot is um, this is a 10 also, so I know that this is like obviously the bracket, but if you have the one with the extender already on it, there's like uh, some BMWs that come with the one where it comes out to here, you don't have to use this extender, I think it's better than this one, but I don't know. Anyway, I was able to get it off. Now it's about time to pull this battery out. Now when you pull this battery out, be very careful not to mess with this line because this is the airbag and this little zip tie that connects to the vehicle and try to move everything out the way as best you can to give you space and we're gonna grab the battery cross hand and then pull it out which means I'm gonna stand this way my right hand is gonna be on this slot here and my left hand is gonna be pulling out from this one obviously I can't do this holding the camera so also, one last thing before I start, there is, let me see if I get you guys a good look. Let me move this out the way. There is an air vent tube here. It'd be good to take that out. There it is. 
Oh, my hand's blocking it. Hold on. There you go. Take this air vent tool out. This is vents out the battery, so the air escapes outside the vehicle. Put that to the side, because if you pull it, you could snap this, and that would not be good. All right, see you guys in a little bit. All right, just a quick comparison of the batteries. As you can see, they're both the same size. You can see this is sulfuric acid, which is a lead acid battery. This is also sulfuric acid, lead acid battery. Usually you have to code the batteries if you're using a, a different type of battery than you normally have in the car. Um, which usually means you're using like an ANG, which is like a, I think it's an acid glass. I'm not too sure what M means, but it's a different type of chemical on the inside. It's a newer technology also. So in order not to drain the battery um, or undercharge or overcharge, you need to register the battery, which you're going to need a scanner. Some of you who have MSD, MSD can also do it or a scanner can do it. But if you're going from one battery that's similar to the other size battery and then they're both they're both lead batteries you don't really need to code them you just gotta just register the battery that's all i will show you that at the end of the video anyway oh yeah before i put this into the back make sure that when you put this back in that these you see these three grooves right here that this sits on the three grooves when you put it back into the vehicle don't place it this way or sometimes people place it this way make sure it sits in the groove so that's that's what keeps the battery from moving back and forth now inside the cavity for the battery when you set it or well, right over here there's another groove you have to make sure that this slide here goes under that groove so many people put the battery on top of it and they're hearing noise in their car they don't know that this groove here underneath is to hold the battery in place along with the bracket that goes here to keep the battery from moving do not put the battery on top of this groove here because then the battery will just slide back and forth making noise every time you hit a bump or something and people are wondering what's going on now, as anyone knows from changing these car batteries in the BMW, they could be tricky. So what I did was I put the battery um, facing down, slide it over, and let it tilt in while I held this up. So this wouldn't um, so this wouldn't get entangled with the battery. And the next thing is now to just slide the battery forward, make sure it sits in that back slide I told you about, and then connect all the pieces back. We'll be right back. Now, after I slid the battery forward, I place in the the positive terminal, and then after that, I'll place in the negative terminal, and just screw it down lightly. Don't screw it down too much; just light enough so that it holds. And also push these two brackets down so that uh, it's locked onto the the battery itself and doesn't move around all right then you're going to take this and put it into the hole in the side so the there's a breathing tube here put that tube back in let me see there you go it's in now let me just put screw this thing down Be right back all right, just screw this on. Make sure that it's tight enough. Don't over, do not over tighten this. When you feel it, that is snug. That's it. Cause it's gonna hold by the brack by the brackets silver brackets on the side anyway just want to make sure there's a good connection and put the top back on make sure this is on properly also i like to check it okay we're good here all right now let's take 
this red one. Let's put it back in. Get here to the back where it was. It's being a little... Now we're gonna connect the red plug back to the where it was. Or I should say the black one that was in the first one. Make sure it clicks. And we're gonna connect this blue one back up. Let me take away. I have to use a bungee cord to keep this out the way. Should have mentioned that prior. Remove the bungee cord. back snaps in and now last we're going to oh, look at a slide this underneath we're just going to you're gonna get a spark or so but there you go we just need to just tighten that down and we should be okay from there Mug. Just want it tight enough just to hold. We don't want to over tighten, we just want to be able to hold. That's it right there. Okay, last, put the bracket back on. Bracket goes this way. like to hand place the nuts or bolts that way you know you're not stripping them the one on top also but just to inform you I did use this bungee cord to hold this in place and to hold the red bracket in place so I could slide the battery in as you know, BMW never want to make anything easy. Okay, it's tight enough. Okay, it's tight enough. All right, now I think that's it. I almost forgot. Got to put the bracket back where it was. Make sure it sits. Okay, make sure it sits on top of the battery before you start screwing it in. Okay. Start the hand tie first. Alright. And I'll do the rest off camera. I hope you guys can see that down there, how the bracket is sitting on the side of the battery, all those holes. And um, this continues to spin, so be careful not to over tighten this to the point where it's stripped, because you're going to have a hard time taking the battery out if you have to again. Now I just need to place all this back in the corner, and then the job is pretty much done. Make sure that these clips on the bottom, as you can see, goes into underneath these grooves over here. Alright, if not, that's not sitting right either. There you go, sits flush, flat. Uh, turn the knob, turn the knob right here, pull on it, make sure everything sits good so you're not getting any bounces when things are hit the curbs all right and now time to register the battery from what I know I think you can 
register the battery using MHD. Uh, for MHD, you just have to just open it up, go to register, reset adaptation, and go to the bottom. It says reset, but I'm going to try it with this uh, a little bit more sophisticated Zenith ZR13 scan code. All right, so first you go to menu. Let's get a clearer picture here. Let me see. There you go. Then you go to down to battery reset and replace battery register. On that, wait a moment. Okay, afterward I had pushed the battery to reset next and it said the battery replacement was successful. Was successfully registered in engine uh, module. Alright, let's start the car and see what happens. Alright, everything's running good. But all I had to do so far was just reset the time and sound like the car's running good. Alright guys, I guess this is the DIY for replacing a battery on a BMW E90. Obviously this goes for the E90, 328s, 335s, even some of the F's um, series and um, even the M's, M E90, M3, all the M3 series, E92, E91. If you have any questions, please hit me down below. I answer um, almost every comment. And most of the tools that I use and the battery that I got, I'll try to put that in the link below. All right, Chris Virals, we're out.